Welcome to Wagons of Steel. It's a party and everyone's invited. Today, uh, this video is going to be about Brutus, the long gone stock eliminator car that we built slightly after we built the wagon. Um, this is a uh, tough video for me. I, I, it took me a while to work up the nerve to make this video. Anybody who knows me, who knows Wagons of Steel, knows at least partially about the the Brutus saga. Um, it, uh, I guess I'm just going to start from the very beginning. Brutus was um, sitting in a, uh, the yard of a friend of mine in Tacoma. I went over there for something. I can't even remember what. It was, it was uh, around 2000, so 23 years ago. And um, it was, uh, you know, it's a 1966 Plymouth Belvedere II, two-door hardtop. And um, it was sitting in the corner of his yard. And um, he uh, kept telling me about oh, a bunch of other crap I didn't want to hear about. And then he's, you know, he mentioned that that car was for sale. And um, I uh, asked him, you know, how much? And, you know, we were trying to remember how much it was. It was like... I thought 800 my friend thought 1200 so we'll call it a thousand bucks in that general region it had a, a 360 in it that he swore ran but it I never saw it run um, it was probably originally a 318 poly car uh, it was blue and it had uh, uh, some uh, damage to uh, one of the fenders was beat up and the bumper was bad and had a grill was messed up but basically a pretty straight, relatively rust-free car. And I um, I thought, wow, you know, I think I could probably fix that car up. Because, you know, at the time, we were campaigning uh, a 1966 Plymouth Belvedere II station wagon called the Helvedere. I'll get you a picture of that guy. This is the Helvedere. I, um, I restored him, sort of. I repainted him and... Sold him off to a friend, and he's he's for sale. You know, if if you ever see him, you're interested in a good race car. I think last time I checked, the price was down to fifteen hundred bucks, and I was tempted, sorely tempted, but <laughs> I had to get a grip on myself. I've already owned that car. I don't need to own him again. But anyways, you can see, you know, there's there's all kinds of parts on him, and uh, we have a, a bunch of other parts cars, and so uh, when I saw. The car that would become Brutus in my friend's yard, I, I thought, well, shit, I, I can make that thing all straight. I've got all the extra bits and pieces. And so I um, I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. I you know paid him the 1000 bucks or 800 bucks or whatever it was and brought it back home. And it sat around for a while. And then um, I, uh, I uh, got to work on him and I straightened him out. And hung the, the parts on him. And uh, what else? Uh, I decided to paint it black. Everything about that car was difficult. Why paint a car black? But um, I painted it black, and then I decided that. Uh, how did that work? Oh, then we moved him over to uh, uh, an outbuilding at Dr. Big Block's shop and forgot about him for a while. And then. Um, we decided, well, now it's time to do something with this car. I'm going to make him into a stock eliminator car, and um, so uh, and sell him, you know, uh, uh, an investment project. So <clears throat> I we did. We had like a uh, we had a rear end in for for it. Uh, you know, it was a uh, it was actually put together by Cal Method. Thanks, Cal. And we bought it at a uh, swap meet a few years earlier, so we put that in, and I uh, got to work on an engine program. Uh, Dan Dvorak was alive then, and I had him start to work on a 273, <coughs> excuse me, uh, project. Um, 273 would have put it in U stock automatic, which is a, a popular class, probably because it's USA. I don't know. So we got all that stuff started. We had the short block done. We had a set of heads. And then um, <clears throat> I decided, well, man, I can't, I don't want to go that slow. 273 two barrel. 
So we um, sold that off to somebody um, and uh, started on a 383 uh, four barrel project. And um, eventually that we got that done and um, then we needed a transmission for it. And so we went to our transmission guy and um, we had him put together a transmission for us. And uh, then while he was doing that, we decided, well, why not get him to partner up with us? So we made him an offer he couldn't refuse, you know, uh, jump on in, come on in, and the water's fine. So uh, build us a transmission and, uh, you know, help us put this thing back together again. And you can, you can, uh, you can race it and then eventually we'll, we'll sell it. So um, we did that. We got it all together. <clears throat> we uh, got all kinds, you know, all kinds of knickknacks and all. It's it's a it's an expensive proposition to build a race car from scratch. I'll tell you that. So we put it all together. Uh, we went out racing with it, and uh, you know, some success. It was it was once we got all the the basic stuff together it went seven tenths under the index and the index was i believe 1215 it was an h stock automatic car and uh i think the best we got out of it was uh maybe in the 1140s but mostly it was ran in the 1150s and you know that's that's pretty good uh it it could be faster i mean there's there's guys who run second under so 11s 11 O, 11 ones, but we weren't quite there yet. We went to uh, the Na Northwest Nationals. We drove down and did a divisional in Sonoma. Um, it went to Vegas. Uh, we did Woodburn. I don't think we made it to Mission with that car, but uh, we went to. Uh, we did the Seattle Divisional. It was it was a it was a full year. It was it was pretty successful. Um, that and, and during that time, uh, my wagon was misbehaving. I remember we were at the national event and Doctor Big Block couldn't come because he had some kind of a health issue, and uh, uh, one of the carburetors just filled the the engine with gasoline, and so there we were at the national event doing draining all the oil and changing all the plugs and it barely barely qualified and I was out in the first round um, I don't remember how far Brutus went there he didn't do especially well there um, and uh, then what did we do after that then after that I it went to Vegas and it got parked in the trailer at Tranny Guy's shop, and uh, there it sat. We didn't really do anything with it for a while, and then um, I started thinking about, you know, selling the car. I talked with Dr. Big Block about it, and uh, we decided, well, shit, this car is too nice for any of us to afford. Um, so we we decided to. Um, we would call it uh, worth two, uh, what, twenty-two five, twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars. So if you divide it three ways, one guy could buy the other two out for fifteen thousand dollars, and then you know it'd be worth. I think it was probably worth forty thousand dollars, maybe thirty-five thousand dollars at least. I mean, it was it was a beautiful machine. I mean, it was a new race car, basically one year only on it, and. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, Mike and I uh, called up Tranny Guy and said, "Hey, man, uh, what do you want to do about this car?" And he said, "Well, you know, I'm, I've got my new shop up, and I don't really have time to race anymore." And um, I said, "Well, I was thinking that too, and I think uh, uh, I'm going to call the car worth twenty-two five, and if you want it, you can pay us fifteen thousand dollars." And uh, he said, "Wow, that sounds like too good of an offer to pass up." I think I'll do that and I said great um, my only stipulation is I, I really I really want all the money at once uh, or you know at least five thousand dollar payments because I, I don't want to just piss it away and I don't want to do a long payment plan on it or anything like that and he said fine and then 
he started paying me like a thousand dollars here, five hundred dollars there, and uh, it uh, that wasn't what I wanted out of the deal. And eventually, stuff kind of got. It, he eventually wouldn't answer my phone calls, and it was really hard to get any money out of him. And so, I had I had to go down to his shop before Christmas one year, and you know basically shake him down for 700 bucks and it i he said you know when i come back i'm gonna we're gonna have to make a new deal uh because i was going away for christmas and uh you know was, I, I i'm i'm not a struggler but you know i need all the money i can get especially around christmas so i you know i i, I took the 700 dollars, and uh then when i came back then he wouldn't even answer dr big block's calls and so then I, I really didn't I didn't know what to do so I I I went to uh, police uh, I went to a cop in in the uh, parking lot of my supermarket here on the island and, and said hey man I explained gave him a you know a brief explanation of what we're up against what what should we do about this and he said uh, well you got the title right and I said yeah and he said well why not uh, just go down and pick up the car you know it's it's yours and I thought oh great and uh, I mean, it sounded good, but fuck, you know, I don't know. I, I I called up the police in the city where his shop was, and I asked them about it, and they said, "Yeah, sure, come get it. You got the title; it's your car." And I said, "Well, you know, this is America. I'm sure he's armed. I mean, you can't just go take a car." And they said, "Well, you know, you bring your phone, and if you think you're in trouble, call 911. We'll come and bail you out." Said, well, this seems crazy, but got to do something so we loaded up our ramp truck and we went down there and uh um we we said hey we're we're here for the car and he you know instantly we we're surrounded by all the people in the shop and uh so i stepped outside and i called 911 i said i need to report a stolen car and you know the doors all slammed everybody ran away and we waited around for the cops to show up and they finally they showed up and we told them what was going on they said well we're we're not debt collectors you know that, that's up up to you uh, did he make payments or anything like that? And I said, yeah. I said, well, then, then it's a civil case. So, shh. then we had to drive home with, with nothing. And we got back to the place, to the shop, and I, 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 I wrote a letter to him, and I said, basically, you know, I, I, this is, I'm sorry that this has gone sideways on us, and, uh, uh, I, I hate to spend all this time and money on lawyers. Why don't you just take whatever you think is yours off of that car and we'll pay you back the money that you've paid to us so far. He paid like a couple thousand bucks. And uh, then we'll come down and get the car. And he responded by sending me a, uh, a mechanics lien on the car for $15,000, $14 something. And. Um, you know that means like he he was saying that he had been contracted by us to work on the car and that we hadn't paid him and that he was looking to get this money out of us well that was a bunch of baloney and so we realized well now now this is where we're at so I I, uh, I, I lawyered up we got a uh, we got some. Uh, we got the we got the lawyer to come and take a meeting with us, and uh, we paid him like forty five hundred dollars, a lot, pretty big chunk of change for us, and uh, he got to work. Well, we had the lawyer, and we told the lawyer everything that had gone down, and he said, "Yeah, you definitely got a case," and. Um, the first thing up was the uh, mechanics lien <coughs> was uh, it was obviously it was a false lien and um, as such it put our, our guy in the violation of the Consumer Protection Act which um, and, uh, it put us in line for triple damages so uh, basically a tranny guy would owe us triple the thirteen thousand dollars that he owed on the car, and plus lawyers' fees, so that put it up to forty, 
four thousand dollars or something like that and um, so we uh, he wouldn't respond to any communications from us um, everything had to be served to him um, which of course he ended up paying for because he's paying for lawyers fees and since he wouldn't just answer the stupid phone or respond to a letter and everything had to be served um, then uh, the, the day of the court the day that, that we had to meet with the judge, um, nobody showed up. Our lawyer said we didn't have to show up, and so we, we didn't. And um, the training guy did not show up because he was, I, I don't know, you figure it out. Um, anyways, he didn't show up. And uh, the night before that day, uh, a guy... Who was uh, who had been on our team? Who was a friend with Tranny Guy? Got drunk and sent us these really creepy text messages, uh, saying a bunch of weird, threatening stuff, and saying that he torched Brutus and that you know a bunch of junk. And um, so we uh, we sent uh, screen captures of that to the lawyer, and the lawyer showed that to the judge and told the judge. We, we don't know what's going on with this car. We just want the money. And since the there was nobody there to represent a uh, tranny guy, we uh, ended up getting uh, uh, everything we asked for, which was, you know, the triple damages plus the lawyer fees. And uh, it was uh, a lien against his house. And uh, it was... Uh, the, it was the the fine the forty four thousand dollars would uh, increase by twelve percent every year. So uh, it was it was that was that was the end of that. Um, you know we didn't have any money or anything, and you know we just you know our lawyer is a great lawyer, and we just we took him at his word that it would be it, it would eventually come to be. You know he he said you know don't worry about it it'll it'll happen it may take a while if he dies you'll get it off his estate. This is a this is a. a a lien against his house, and as far as we can tell, you're in second position. The the first was he, you know, the guy had IRS issues, and so the IRS had a lien on his house too. And um, so then, you know, years went by. Sometimes we would see stuff for sale on Craigslist, and uh, you know, from you know bits and pieces from from Brutus. You know, I, I think we saw his rear end getting sold, and you know, other stuff, and people would go by the shop and say, oh, I saw Brutus, you know, we'd hear sightings, but he never made it out to the racetrack, and, you know, we didn't forget about it, but it was, you know, other stuff happens, and we, you know, just life goes on, and then last year, we got a, uh, got a message, what I have, oh, something, Oh, uh, uh, he, the tranny guy started saying, hey, you know, uh, I might have recovered him from being stolen. You, you know, you want him back, you know, uh, I'll give you $5,000 in the car. And, you know, he was kind of hemming and hawing like, uh, like he, he didn't want to say it outright, but he hadn't, he had figured out that, that um, we had a lien against his house for this car that had to be satisfied before he could get any credit on his house or do any, you know, loans or sell the house or anything like that. And, um... I, I just gave him my lawyer's number and he called my lawyer and he threatened her and said, uh, you know, you'll, you'll be hearing from my lawyer, but then it, nothing ever came of it because, of course, we had an ironclad case and, and uh, there was really nothing that could be done about it except pay us. And at that point, it was like up to like oh, $70,000, something like that. And then I didn't hear anything after that for a while and then uh, a couple months ago or a month ago my lawyer sent me a a, 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 a a it's like a form as a you know, the request for information about you know what what we needed from the lien to satisfy the lien from the the title holder of the house and I, I I saw that and I emailed back to the lawyer that, hey this seems promising question mark and the lawyer said, oh, yeah, it seems very promising. And so then um, 
uh, uh, like a week later, it was like, yeah, we're we're getting the check. Here's a check. It's coming in the mail right now. And then uh, then then here is the check. They sent me a. They showed me a copy of the check. It's for seventy seven thousand dollars. Like holy crap! And um, then uh, they uh, they took. They had to do like filing fees uh, for the county and uh, a couple other like you know finish out what we owed them the lawyers which is like you know a couple hundred bucks we we really uh, we pretty much paid them out and um, then they came by and delivered me a check for seventy six thousand dollars like wow so you know divided that up among my you know my I split it with with Doctor Big Lock and then we paid. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, who painted the car originally, we always said we were going to pay him for it. When we got it, and you know, <laughs> he's our friend. You know, he, he's you know he's not going to ride us about it, but you know, I'm sure he wasn't really expecting it. I mean, nobody was expecting it, and then all of a sudden, all of us got paid. So now, now it's it's the Brutus saga has come to a conclusion. It's over. It's done. Uh, if you ever see that car, it's you know. It is. It's no longer ours. It's it. It belongs to the other guy. Uh, you know, he paid seventy-seven thousand dollars for a car that was worth way less than half of that, and I hope he uh, enjoys it. <laughs> and you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, what what uh, uh, what more can you say? It's like, thanks for the money, honey. So, what did we learn from the, this Brutus episode? Um, you know. The number one lesson I want to take away from it is that sometimes the good guys win. Uh, you know, we 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 put a lot of time and energy and suffering into this deal, um, and it's nice to know that sometimes the good guys win. You know, we did eventually make a, a bunch of money off of it. It wasn't the way that I wanted to. Um, but, you know, the good guys do win sometimes. Um, what else did I learn? Title your car. That was really, that was the, the, the thread that really unraveled on this whole thing. Was I still own the title on that car. Um, uh, and, uh, like, uh, all the cars in my yard I have the titles on. Well, not every single one, but almost all the cars. I really, really, really really try to only have cars that have titles even race cars no matter what anybody says title the car when you get the title put it in your name it takes time you know but time flies my god you oh it takes two years well you get started and before you know it title comes in the mail and it almost always comes faster than they say it will um keep records of the sale that was another thing that we did that was that really worked out i i didn't think it meant anything but every time i would get one of those payments of seven hundred dollars or five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever i would write it down on this little piece of paper it was just a piece of scrap paper but i'd write the date and how much money i'd gotten and that was proof enough for the courts that i had made a uh that it was an actual deal that it, uh that the uh that mechanics lien was bogus and so that there there you go you make a, a note of payments and payment plans suck don't do payment plans make if you're selling a car to somebody if you're buying a car don't make payment plans go to the bank make a payment plan to the bank get a credit card make credit card payments don't payment plans you know i say that i'll make payment plans again it's you know it's just the way that people like us have to do business but it just has to be said payment plans suck uh, lawyer up. That goes without saying. Without a lawyer, this never would have happened. It's it's you know there comes a time when you've got a lawyer up, and don't be afraid to do it. Just go for it. You know people say lawyers suck. Lawyers don't suck. Lawyers rock. Um, manage expectations. Um, uh, you know you can't. I can't expect that someone's going to screw me especially somebody I'd done business for, for so long like our tranny guy I, I really didn't expect him to to do what he did um so but you know manage expectations you know this i i tried you know i i want big payments and you know or, you know 
I don't know, manage expectations. Uh, take photos uh, of the car, uh, you know, for identification purposes. I have that one picture I showed you at the beginning of this video. Uh, I don't know. I, it's good to, have, good to take photos. Uh, building a stock eliminator car for resale is a sucker's game. Building a stock eliminator car is a sucker's game anyways. It's, there's, there's no money in it. Um, there, you could probably make money by doing stuff for stockers, like building engines or putting roll bars in, or you know, selling bits and pieces or painting a car, you know, to services. But the actual complete car, you're never going to make your money back out of it, unless you know, <laughs> I guess we did. Um, and Stock Eliminator is an adventure, it's, it's uh, all kinds of wild and woolly stuff happens when you build a stocker and sell it and stuff like that. Well, that's pretty much the Brutus story as I know it. Um, I wish I could say I'm never going to have to tell that story again, but, uh, you know, if, if you know somebody else who wants to know more about the Brutus adventure, then direct them to this video and uh, I'll uh, see you down the road.